This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk through this 2021 Autumn Ridge model 172 FB. Okay, so you do have a power awning with LED lights and that there's speakers on the awning arms. Uh, you got regular crank uh, style scissor jacks that take a, a three quarter inch crank or a three quarter inch socket on a drill. It's power out, of course. This is your hitch. It's a Husky Centerline weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. We'll show you how that operates when you pick up your trailer. This is your dump hose here. All right. This is just a hookup for a solar panel. If you're if you're ever interested in getting a solar battery charger, it would plug in right there. Uh, you have a 20-pound LP tank that's full, a deep cycle marine battery. And these are the brackets for your hitch. All right. There's two ways to get water, uh, water for the trailer. The most common is the city water connection. So you're just going to hook your hose up there, turn it on, and you're all set. Now, if you go to a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsites, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here and use the onboard pump to pump the water. So either way, it'll, it'll operate just like it has uh, city water. Okay. Now, this is the vent for your range hood. So if you're going to use the, the fan in the range hood, you want to just to flat freely like so, right? Um, otherwise you keep it shut. So when you're venting, you want to open these two little latches here so the baffle flaps freely, but when you're traveling or in storage, whatever, you want it uh, shut. You've got a 30 foot, 30 amp cord. These are your dump valves down here. You've got a gray and a black. The black is toilet water and waste. The gray is sink and shower water, right? So you always dump the black first because it's the dirtiest of water. And then you dump the gray after that to help flush it out a bit. Um, this is just cable and satellite through, which is coax. Okay. Uh, and your water heater, the controls, well, let me show you. The uh, controls are inside. It works on gas. Uh, but this is where you drain it right here. It's an inch and a sixteenth so six point socket. Um, plus, you need an extension to get so you can operate your ratchet. So that's where you drain it. Um, the switch to turn it on and off is inside the trailer. I'll show you that when I get in there. That that drain plug is also an anode rod, so it's about maybe eight inches long, something like that. Okay, so fire extinguisher right when you come in the door. This device down here. Let me get some lights here. This is the uh, carbon monoxide LP gas detector. Okay. Um, basically, if it detects carbon monoxide or LP gas, it'll alert you. Also, if it's um, if there's a low battery, it'll beep very slowly. Let me put you through the whole test here. That's LP gas, carbon monoxide coming up, and low battery alarm. Okay, uh, it should always be green like it is. Uh, it obviously goes off, you're going to take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front and figure out what's going on. Okay, now this device here is the power converter. So, this converts AC to DC power. So, you have a regular 110 AC on this side. These are regular circuit breakers like you'd see at home, and they're all labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side. You've got 12 volt fuses and they're all labeled. So if these, these fuses blow, they'll actually light up so you can see it through this perforation here. Um, there's a fan which is running right now when you, when you put a load on it, it'll cool it down. Also, when you're plugged in, this is a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy your battery up front needs and it'll keep it charged, okay? You have a cooktop, and this is, a, I don't know if he's got the gas on or not, but I'll just put you through the motions anyway. This is the sparker. You turn this clockwise. Okay, so let's see if he's got it turned on. Yep, he does. So you can see right there, you just select the burner and, uh, and click it by turn or light it by turning it clockwise and you're all set. Now I showed you the baffle on the outside for the range hood vent. That's right there. So if you're going to run the vent, 
um, it vents the outside, which is which is what you want. Some of the trailers just circle through a, a, a thin charcoal pad and back into the trailer. This one actually goes to the outside, so um, make sure you open that baffle when you're going to vent. Okay, microwave like microwave works like any other microwave. Now this is your thermostat for the furnace. Uh, off is all the way to the left. It'll click to the left to shut it off, and then you turn it on obviously by going towards the right and setting the temperature you want and then the controls for the air conditioner are on the unit itself okay um, now your refrigerator this is a 12 volt DC compressor refrigerator so it'll run off the battery which is being charged by your tow vehicle when you're pulling it down the road and when you're plugged in the uh, battery will be charged by the power converter here when you're plugged in okay so just on and off you can set your temperature obviously um, you can, uh, there's, a, there's a power saving mode, um, it's very simple uh, refrigerator, but it's, uh, it's uh, got a lot, of, uh, a lot of storage inside. The thing is, with the, with the gas absorption refrigerators, you can, um, you know, they're about the same size, height and width, but they don't go back as far, they're, they don't have as big a depth as this one does, so by having the 12 volt DC you've got more storage in the refrigerator. And here's starting to rain out there. Okay, so of course your um, your table, you pull the legs out and then set the top on these cleats here, right? And then use the cushions to fill in the space and you can turn that into a bed. This is, uh, I'm curious to see what this is. Just storage. Oops, just storage. Okay. Um, that's your furnace there. I showed you where the thermostat was. All the lights that don't come on with the master switch have a button. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We have a sink and shower that work like any other sink and shower. You want to uh, run the fan with the shower to pull the humidity out. And the other thing to know is that this toilet can't be used dry. The RV toilets have to have um, water and chemical in the black tank. So there's the flush pedal there. So that's the black tank directly below us. So what happens uh, when you plug in, you'll plug in your trailer, um, you'll uh, hook up the water, then you'll come inside and you'll put it one dose of chemical right in the bowl, then you'll step on the flush pedal and let about a gallon of water go into the tank below. Um, put a gallon, some people use more, but you have, to have a gallon and some chemical. And so every time you start over the, with an empty black tank, you've got to you got to put water and chemical in it, otherwise uh, the smell will be overwhelming and it's uh, and it get, can, can also get clogged up, so uh, make sure you do that, okay? All right, I think that about covers it. Oh, one more thing here. This is your awning to extend and retract. You can see right there. Never leave it out unattended. If, it's, if you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in. Your water pump, turn it on right here. Your water heater, you turn it on here. You can check your levels, your battery, fresh water tank, black tank, a gray tank. It graduates up in one-third increments. Once you get past two-thirds, you got to start thinking about dumping the, the black or gray tanks, okay? All right. Okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And one other thing you have to remember is you need to inspect the roof. This is not, on, this, is not this trailer. On all trailers, you need, need, need to inspect the roof every 90 days, so make sure you go up there yourself or send someone up there and just look at all the sealant make sure there's no cracking or separation look at the uh, vent covers to make sure they weren't damaged by uh, any low branches or anything like that just give it a good inspection okay if you do see something take care of it immediately that's that's the key thing so every 90 days you inspect it and uh, and um, maintenance maintenance when necessary okay thank you very much